Good evening, Booktube. This is Johnny. Time to make another video. My wife has gone to work. And, and I uh, cleaned the kitchen and uh, swept the kitchen floor, took a hot shower, flossed my teeth, and uh, recharged this battery for this camera so I can make a video. Because I said in my last couple of videos, I was going to go through the Gospel of John, get that off my mind. It's very difficult to do these videos on the Gospels because I have so much material. Uh, because I don't want this video. My videos are are too long right now. I mean, I mean they're 20 minutes, 28 minutes, and uh, I wish I could make a video that was five minutes and cover the whole Gospel of John in five minutes. But I couldn't cover the Gospel of John in 80 years <laughs> in my lifetime. I know scholars who have spent their whole academic life just studying the Gospel of John. And uh, so, but I want to get this off my mind, so let's get to it. It is May the 29th. It is a Tuesday night here in West Michigan. It is 827. It is 75 degrees inside the hermit hut. <laughs> yeah, uh, I consider our house a hermit hut. Uh, it's like a cave that I can withdraw into to escape the the uh, the world of man, <laughs> I suppose. Uh, so, what I'm going to do is that I on yesterday I was sitting here in the, in the dining room, writing in my diary, and it was around twelve thirty. And I just decided that I would just read through the Gospel of John really quickly and just write down some stuff. <laughs> and um, because, I, like I said, I could spend hours and hours and hours just going through the Gospel of John, going through the other Gospels. And uh, one thing, when you, you read the Gospel of John, he tells, you in the, he tells you why he wrote, what his purpose was when he composed the Gospel of John. And if you, if you go into the Gospel of John, you come towards the end of the Gospel, and you find this verse. It says in God, uh, John chapter 20, uh, verses 30 and 31, And truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciple, which are not written in the book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Anointed One, the Messiah, the Son of God, second person of the Godhead, and that believing you may have life in his name. So he mentions in here that that there were many signs or works or some versions, I don't like this word, but miracles. I don't, I don't like the word miracles. I like the word signs. And he says that there were many of them many signs, many mighty works of God that could have been written through in the, his gospel. But he only recorded six or seven signs. And that's why if you look at books or commentaries or studies of John, they call, they, they, you have this 
what is called the Book of Signs, from chapter 1, verse 19, to chapter 12, verse 50. And what after chapter 12, 50, you come really to the very last hours of Jesus' life and leading up to his trial and his crucifixion. But in between these chapters 1 through 12 are six signs. And some would say that the last sign, the seventh sign, is the resurrection of Christ. So what I'm going to do is that I just wrote these down. I just went through the, 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 the Gospel of John. And the first sign you find in chapter 2 of the Gospel of John. Now, some people who do these, uh, who are doing the read through the four Gospels, say that we are to approach the book as a literary work. And that's what I do. I'm not imposing on the Gospel of John my own uh, ideas, but this is how it, uh, that the Gospel of John is structured. And you can see this. Well, if you go to John chapter 2, you have the water turned to wine. I won't read all, all 11 verses of that, but you, you read... Uh, let me see here. I, <laughs> I wrote it down. Let me see here. I wrote it in my diary. I have in my diary here. Here we go. Oh, why don't I have it written down? I don't really know. I'm missing pages. I wrote it down and I can't find it all of a sudden. I am missing pages. Oh, here it is. <laughs> here it is. Okay, here we go. I found it. This is page 414. It says, this is the beginning of signs Jesus did in Galilee, Canaan, Canaan of Galilee, and manifested his glory, and his disciples believed in him. So the first sign was the turning of the water into wine. And it says that uh, there in verse uh, 11. This beginning of signs Jesus did in Canaan of Galilee and manifested his glory. The signs, these mighty works, were to manifest the glory of Christ. And of course, the glory of Christ is the glory of God being manifested in power. Okay. Now, I want to stop here because Every, this is the beginning of the Gospel. The, the, when you have the beginning of the Gospel of John, you have the turning of the water to wine. And what that means is, I'm just going to read something here. And this, I uh, showed you this book, uh, Commentary on the New Testament, Use of the Old Testament, edited by J.K. Beale and D.A. Carson. And, the, and this, uh, I'm going to read this comment here. This comment here. Uh, let me see here. I, can, I had a, my thing here. Oh, I just lost it. <laughs> I can't find it. bothers me when I can't find things.
I don't know why I can't find it. Oh, here it is. The changing of water into wine, the first sign in Canaan. At the, at the Canaan wedding, Jesus is shown to be the bringer of messianic joy who fills up the depleted resource of Judaism. Uh, especially the reference to the six stone waters, water jars used by the Jews for ceremonial washing. In Jewish thought, wine is a symbol of joy and celebration. There is no rejoicing save with wine. The running out of wine at Canaan wedding may be symbolic of the barrenness of Judaism. Prophetic expectation cast the Messianic age as a time when wine would flow freely. Isaiah 25 verse 6, Jeremiah 31 verses 12 through 14, Hosea 14 verse 7, Joel chapter 3 verse 18, Amos 9 verses 13 through 14. So what the, the point I'm trying to say is that what we have here is what we have at the other beginnings of the other Gospels. The announcement of the Messianic age, that Jesus came preaching the kingdom of God, that we find when we read the first chapters of the Gospel of Luke, you have all these Old Testament scriptures are quoted that he is the son of David, that he is the son of Abraham, that he is the promised seed of Abraham, he is the promised seed of David. And we have quoted the prophecies that the seed of David would be the king, that he would reign upon the, the throne forever. So that he would bring in this eschatological kingdom, that he would bring in this new age that would be flowing with wine, with joy and celebration. And we found that uh, throughout each beginning of the Gospels. So that's why the, 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 the first sign is the, is the water being turned into wine, which symbolizes here as we... Uh, the beginning of the Messianic age, or the the kingdom of God, or the 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 restoration of Israel, the the regathering of the tribes of Israel, spiritually speaking. So then, the second sign we have is the healing of the nobleman in chapter four of the Gospel of John, and you find that then Jesus said to him, to the, the man who needed to be healed, unless, unless, you, unless you people see signs and wonders, you will in no wise, no means to, to believe. This again is the second sign Jesus did when he had come out of Judea into Galilee. You read that in the Gospel of John chapter 4, verse 54. This is the second sign. So the first sign is the water turned into wine. The second sign is the healing of the lame man uh, there in chapter 4. No, is the healing of the nobleman's son. Why does it say the... Yeah, the healing of the nobleman's son. The healing of the lame man is the third sign, which we find in John chapter 5, verses... 1 through 15. And uh, so you can read that. And then we go down into the feeding of the, of the multitude in John chapter 6, which is the, the fourth sign. You read there, the feeding of the 5,000, the fourth sign. You read in verse 14, Then the, those men who had, when they had seen the sign that Jesus did, said, This is truly the prophet who is to come into the world. And then Jesus says, Not because you saw the signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. They were following Jesus, not because they believed him to be the promised Messiah, but they were following him because he gave them bread and he's kind of rebuking them. But that is the fourth sign is the feeding of the 5,000. And then you have the, the fifth sign is the healing of the blind man in chapter 9 of the Gospel of John. 
verses 1 to 41. A man born blind receives sight is the fifth sign. And you read in verse 16 of chapter of 9. Therefore some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. Others said, How can a man who is a sinner do such signs? And there was division among them. They said to the blind man again, What do you say about him? Because he opened your eyes. He said, He is a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him who received his sight. So the, the healing of the blind man is the fifth sign. And not only Jesus heals the lame, he, he gives healing to the nobleman's sign, son, he feeds the, the 5,000, the great multitude. Now he heals the blind man, the fifth sign. And then we have the raising of Lazarus, which is the sixth sign that is recorded in chapter 11 of the Gospel of John. And that's from verses 1 through 57. And what always amazes me is that when you read the account of the resurrection of Lazarus, it says, um, So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Then after he said to his disciples, Let's go to Judea again. And the disciples said to him, Rabbi, lately the Jews sought to stone you. Are you going there again? And Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day and he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks in the night and he stumbles because the light is not in him. These things he said after that he had said to them, Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him up. Then his disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get well. However, Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought he was speaking about taking rest and sleep. Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. <clears throat> I am glad for your sakes that I was not there, that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. Then Thomas, who is called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us go, also go, that we may die with him. So when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away, and many of the Jews had joined the women around Martha and Mary, who were the sisters of Lazarus, to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary was sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that he that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. And Jesus said to her, Your brother it will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that thou art the Messiah the Son of God who has come into the world. And when she had said these things, she went her way, secretly called Mary her sister, saying, The teacher has come and is calling for you. And as soon as she heard that, she rose quickly and came to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the town, but was in the place where Martha met him. Then the Jews who were with her in the house and comforting her, when they saw that Mary rose up quickly and went out following her, saying, She is going to the tomb, to weep there. Then where Mary came, where Jesus was, and she saw him, she fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came her with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept the man from dying? Then again, then Jesus, again groaning in himself, came to the tomb, and it was a cave, and stone laid against it. 
Jesus said, Take away the stone. And Martha, sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is stench, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not say that you would be- that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? See, the glory of God is seen in the sign. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was laying. Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you have always heard hear me. But because of the people you are, who are standing by, I said this, that you may believe that you sent me. And when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. And Jesus said to them, Loose them and let them go. Now listen to the reaction of the Jews. And many of the Jews who had come to Mary and had seen these th- seen the things Jesus did believed in him. But some of some of them went away, the Pharisees, and told the them the things Jesus did. And the chief priests and the Pharisees entered a council and said, What shall we do? For this man works many signs. If we let him alone like this, everyone will believe in him, and the Romans will come and take away both our place and nation. And one of them, Caiaphas, being the high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing at all. And then it says, then from that day on, they plotted to put him to death. You see, right here, you have this, the signs. The sixth sign, the final sign. And the glory of God was manifested in the resurrection of Lazarus. He had been dead four days. The stench came out of the, out of the tomb. And there were the, the Pharisees and the scribes and the Jews around weeping and crying and groaning and Jesus wept and then Jesus said Lazarus come forth and he came out wrapped in grave clothes around his face and around his body and they said let him loose take off the grave clothes and yet it says and many of the Jews who had come to Mary and had seen the things Jesus did believed in him but also you have the reaction of the Pharisees and the scribes the Jewish leaders who from that day on plotted to kill him. So then, what is the final sign? The seventh sign is the resurrection of Christ from the dead. So you can look at the Gospel of Matthew, it's not the Gospel of Matthew, the Gospel of John as the book of signs. It's interesting that the first sign of the water turned into wine was only seen by the disciples. And it's the same with the last sign, the seventh sign. Only the disciples and the followers of Jesus witnessed his, his resurrection after the third day he rose from the dead. And uh, so I just want to bring that out. Uh, but the seventh and climatic sign, his resurrection is again like the first, witnessed only by the disciples. So, but to me, it's always kind of interesting because uh, you have today in some Christian circles that they believe that they have miracle services and they'll have people come forward who are in wheelchairs and they have people who have diseases and they'll lay hands on them. And they believe that if people would see these healings, that people will believe that Jesus is truly the the Messiah, that he is the Savior of sinners. No. The Pharisees and scribes saw the signs. They saw even Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead, and yet they plotted to kill him. The only way a person is going to believe in Jesus Christ is if they see spiritually his glory, his divine beauty, His sufficiency is the savior of sinners. They have to have their eyes opened, spiritually speaking. They have to be divinely illuminated. They have to be born again. They have to become new creations in Christ. Old things pass away and all things become new. 
And now they have the ability spiritually to see who Christ really is. And that is the manifestation of the glory of Christ as the work of the Holy Spirit. So uh, I just thought I'd bring that out. I mean, I could, like I said, I could talk all night. I was going to show you uh, when I was in Bible college. I'm just going to show you some books that, if you want to know uh, further books on the Gospel of John. Uh, I in uh, 1981 I graduated from Reformed Bible College, and when I was in Bible college, we used for the study of the Gospel of John this commentary by Leon Morris, the Gospel according to John, New International Commentary, New Testament. He also wrote these volumes, Reflections on the Gospel of John, uh, Leon Morris, Volume 1, The Word Was Made Flesh, John 1-5. through five. Then you have Volumes 2, The Bread of Life, John chapter 6-10. through 10. And then you have Volume 3, The True Vine, John 11-16. through 16. And then you have Volume 4, The Crucified and Risen, so you can read these. This is a book I bought when I lived in California before I went to Bible College. And it's one of my favorite books on the Gospels. Not only, it's, it's Discourses and Sayings of Our Lord. And it has expositions on Gospel, Luke and Matthew, sermons, expositions. by, And he lived in the 19th century, John Brown. He was a Scottish uh, Presbyterian minister, and this is a really famous book that's been printed many times. And then when I was in seminary, uh, I graduated from seminary in 1986, and in the, in the Gospel of John class, we used this commentary by Raymond Brown. This is a Roman Catholic New Testament scholar. This is the Anchor Bible. Uh, we use this this is uh, John chapter 1 through 12, the Gospel of John 13 through 21 in the Anchor Bible. And also when I was in seminary, I bought this three volume commentary by R Rudolf Schackenberg on the Gospel according to John, volumes 1, volumes 2, and volumes 3. So if you I'll put these at the bottom of this video if you want to go really deep into the Gospel of John. If you want a good resource, these are good to have. I really recommend uh, Leon, Leon Morris is for basically lay people. You might find Raymond Brown and Shackenberg more academic, a little bit more difficult. If you want something really popular, by Reflections on the Gospel of John by Leon Morris. These are published by Baker Bookhouse. And I highly recommend Discourses and Sayings of Our Lord by John Brown. This is my, one of my favorite books uh, from uh, another century. So that's it. I've done the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I know it was a rush job. I just kind of brushed the surface, just shared some ideas. But it's like what, what John s says at the beginning here, uh, why he wrote his gospel. I'm going to read it one more time. He says, And truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in His name. See, there's no life. If you're outside of Christ, you're dead in your sins and trespasses. You're going to perish. There's only life. That's why Christ came. He came to die on the cross that we might be forgiven of our sins and receive the gift of eternal life, be justified by faith, be sanctified by the work of the Holy Spirit. Be conformed unto the image of Christ. 
I mean, the Gospels were not just written to give us uh, some kind of bio a biography of Jesus. They were Gospel. They were to be preached and taught. And that they, the response was to be one of repentance and faith, not just some intellectual speculation in our brain. But we, that the signs were to point us to the glory of Christ. His all-sufficiency is saved. He can heal us. He can restore us. He can give us spiritual sight. He can raise us from this, our spiritual death into under everlasting life. So I just want to share that with you. And now it's 8.56 at night here in West Michigan. It's a Tuesday. I did go to thrift stores today. I had to go out and get some coffee beans and get some paper from my from my diary and I stopped at a couple of thrift stores and got some books. I'll show those tomorrow night. I have to, I got a call from the book nook. Some volunteer asked me to, to take their place tomorrow. So I'll do that from three to five. I might find some books at the library, use bookstore, the book nook. As far as what I read today, besides the Gospel of John, I read How to Change Your Mind, what the new science of psychedelics teaches us about consciousness, dying, addiction, depression, and transcendence by Michael Pollan. I read that today. Yeah, I'm really enjoying this. It's, uh, as you know, I read books all the time on consciousness, states of consciousness, psychedelics, the history of LSD, Timothy Leary, the 60s, you know, this what goes on and on. Drugs, cannabis, Mary Jane, Hunter S. Thompson, you know, things like that. The glory of the, the glory of the beatniks, you know, all kinds of things like that. But I will close and hope you're having a good week. Here it's been extremely hot, but we thank the Lord for central air and that uh so yeah, I'll close, download this. Until next time, bye.